All right, everyone. Uh, again, thanks for coming out tonight and investing your time in accelerating the success of your business. What we're going to talk about today is how I have, since March 15th, grown to about 890 affiliates on my team. And I want to share that information with you and I want to help empower you to do the same thing because you can do the same thing. I'm from East Texas and, uh, you know, we're not always the sharpest pencil in the box. So if, if us East Texas boys can do it, you ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, you can do it. It's just a step-by-step -step process that I follow and it works. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a PowerPoint. And I'm going to go through a couple of things I think is important for you to understand really before we go into the strategy. Uh, we'll go through that. Um, one thing just as by a show of hands, how many people here have been in the great discovery for three months or more? Raise your hand. Okay. Two, two months or more, or no, just two months or less, raise your hand. Okay. So we've got a few, few folks who are pretty new. Um, and so one thing that I will share with you is if you have, how many has been in the business less than 30 days? Anybody? Okay. So I think a lot of you have, have been to a, a number of the group meetings, heard a lot of information about the great discovery and can probably answer some basic questions. But those of you, um, you know, who really haven't been in that long, I really strongly encourage you to get on some of those meetings. You know, uh, Alex Hitt does a phenomenal one every morning. And then of course, uh, multiple times per week, the, the uh, company does them as well. So if you don't have the schedule for that, email me, we'll get you the schedule for those meetings because it'll get it to the point to where you can answer some of the questions yourself when prospects ask. And that's a good thing. Um, also, just want to let you know that as you're going through this process that I'm going to share tonight, if you have someone who has questions, we encourage you to do three-way calls. You can put me on your list of people that you can call on a three-way call. If you don't have my uh, phone number, then you know uh, put in the chat box at the end of, end of the meeting. I'll check the chat box, make sure everybody gets my phone number. Uh, but uh, I think being able to reach out to people spontaneously and doing a three-way call is very important. And uh, so we'll go through some of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this PowerPoint. This training, as I stated, is to help you uh, accelerate the success of your business. As you know, I'm James Money Penny. I've spent over 30 years building franchise companies, both nationally and internationally. One of the key things about building uh, franchises is um, building replicatable systems. And by the way, speaking of replicatable, I need to replicate the PowerPoint on screen so y'all can actually see it. I open PowerPoint and go, oh. Well, you can't see it until I share it. Um, so you you have to build something that's replicatable. And that's the same thing in this business. So I'm going to share my secret sauce of success and help you replicate it. And I'm going to be here with you every step of the way. So don't feel like that I'm going to share this information with you. And then you have to go out and do it all on, on your own because that's not the attempt. Um, you know, I've built very huge teams both in franchising and in affiliate programs. And I built some pretty high-tech uh, e-commerce systems. My degrees in business uh, management and computer information systems. And uh, I have a, an attraction marketing system that I teach as well. So some of the things that we're gonna cover today is really the foundation of your mindset, some tactical action plans, things that you can go out and start doing tonight, tomorrow, as soon as you have a minute to do them. I'm going to share some success building scripts with you, um, a success tracking system. And, um, you know, over time, I'll start adding in some of the attraction marketing things as well. We're just going to use a few of those scripts that are included in attraction marketing. Um, but, uh, you know, also just some personal growth development, breakthrough advancement, and becoming a leader. These are some things that, you know, near the bottom of this slide, I'm going to be adding in at a later date. But today, we're really going to be mostly focused on 
how to add 100 team members or 10x your business in 90 days if you already have 100 team members. And that all starts out with modifying your mindset. And some of you might already have the right mindset. Um, this may just be a refresher for you, but we're going to cover that. Uh, creating compelling invitations for your business, setting up conversations, not appointments or, or present or not presentations rather, and um, how to have a conversation with someone so it doesn't really feel like a presentation. And then how do you formalize a relationship, which is really closing the deal. And then I have an action planning and tracking tool that I'm going to share with you so you can track your success. Uh, you know, Six Sigma uh, uh, format is really all about planning and, and improving and, and that kind of thing. So we want to have some tools here for you available to do that with. And uh, next steps for success. And then I've got a free gift announcement. So how are you going to add 100 people into your business over the next 90 days? It's a pretty simple mathematical uh, you know, goal, and I'm going to share a tool with you to help track that. But what you're going to do between now and July 15th is actually sponsor 10 people into your business. And I chose July 15th because... That's just a little over 30 days from now. Gives you guys a day or two to get things together and start working on this. Um, and then also to help those sponsor 10 by September 15th. That's 90 days, a little over 90 days from now. Now, September 15th is an important date for a number of reasons. One, you know, we're going to set a goal and we're going to work towards that goal. But two... Um, we have our global expansion with, um, hang on just a second. Somebody popped up a recording thing. We have our global expansion coming up in October. The more people that you sponsor into the business, the greater impact it's going to have on your business leading into the October global expansion. Um, this is going to be a very exciting event. There's going to be simulcast in all kinds of countries all around the world. And the more people that you have on board, the more you're going to be able to capitalize on that. Now, uh, one of the things that I want to share with you is a uh, point out is that I said you want to sponsor 10 people into the business. And it's different than enrolling 10 people in the business. When you sponsor people into the business, you're, you're actually helping get them started and get them going by sharing this very same strategy that I'm going to share with you. Um, just about anybody can enroll someone in the business, but if you enroll them and then you don't try to assist them, touch base with them, encourage them, give them you know some leadership to follow, then you've just enrolled them into the business. You haven't sponsored them into the business. All right, first thing on modifying your mindset. You have to stop selling and start serving. You have to start selling and start serving. Nobody likes to be sold. Everybody likes to be served. And you think about the last time you were in a traditional car dealer, you know, they're horrible. They do things to make you stay there. Like they'll take your driver's license. They will take your insurance card for your vehicle and say, oh, they need copies. And then they don't bring them back until you either get angry and insist um, or, you know, you threaten to call the police on them or whatever. I mean, they really do things to try to trick you into staying there and, um, you know, trying to force you into buying, pressure you into buying a car. Um, now imagine, you know, uh, the last time you went to your favorite restaurant, you know, how did you feel there? Well, it's a totally different experience with the restaurant. Because, you know, as I said, with the car dealership, they're they're tricking you, they're manipulating you, they're holding you hostage with your documents. But in a restaurant, um, and actually, uh, I should probably change that from your favorite restraint <laughs> to restaurant uh, on the slide. Um, you know, they're welcoming, they're very social, they offer a personal introduction. You know, it's like, hi, I'm Mary, I'm, I'm going to be your server today. How may I serve you, Right. Um, would you prefer butterscotch pie or apple pie? You know, they're they're really trying to, you know, give you a very good experience. That's one of the major differences between 
selling someone something, being a slicky bridge salesperson, which I think we all probably hate, <laughs> um, and being someone who has a servant heart and is really looking out to help somebody, you know, and what's in their best interest. So like I said, some of you are already, you know, have a servant heart. A lot of your coaches, teachers, trainers, you know, that's just the mindset I find most coaches, teachers, trainers have. Um, so this is, you know, just really more of an, a, a review, but always in everything that you do, practice thinking of serving, not selling. Ask yourself, how can you help this person or the company um, and go out and actually look at information about that person or the company before you talk to them? Because number one, it's a whole different conversation if you already know something about them. Number two, it shows a lot of respect for those people if you've taken the time to learn what's important to them, understanding kind of where they're at. Um, and then you want to craft your invitation to be so compelling that that person not only agrees to meet with you, um, he or she is excited about meeting with you. And I'm going to stop right here for just a moment with this uh, PowerPoint, and I'm going to show you an example of one of those invitations. By the way, in the chat box, um, if, if you don't mind, uh, type in whether or not you think this introduction would be helpful for you. I'm sorry, I got the wrong one here. Or this invitation would be helpful for you. Okay, so this is an example of an of a invitation that is really based on serving this person. So in this scenario, I'm, I'm imagining that, you know, we've already gone out and we've looked at Bob's website or we've looked at Bob's LinkedIn and we understand what Bob is doing. And so the invitation we would craft is, Hi, Bob. You know, wow, your blind spot coaching looks amazing. I love how you're helping people avoid getting hit by the proverbial bus. Your coaching could be very beneficial to our growing army of salespeople and maybe even our customers on a global basis. If you're interested in putting our heads together and see if we could collaborate, please send me your calendar link or a few optional times that we could meet, okay? Um, now, if if you wanna, if anyone wants to unmute yourself or comment um, on this particular invitation, feel free to, to do so. I'd love to hear your feedback. What do you guys think about this particular invitation? Well, it shows you've taken an interest, taken an interest in them by actually doing a little bit of research. And so it lets them, you know, feel like they're being acknowledged and not just pushing something. You're taking what, showing them that you're interested in what they have to offer, that it may fit, that there may be a way that the two of you can come together and collaborate. There, there's no pushy, uh, you know, buy this, buy this. It's like, you've got something interesting and it might work with us over here. Let's see if we can collaborate. Exactly. You hit the head on the nail. It's it's not selling. We're not selling anything. We're not being slimy or sneaky or tricky or, um, you know, pressure them into buying anything. We're just sharing what we like and honestly like about what they have to offer and, and talk about how can we collaborate. Uh, Key, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself and, and feel free to share with us. And one of the great things about it is very non-threatening because, you know, there's certain phone calls you get after they say three words, you know, they trying to sell you something. But this is different. It's non-threatening. You're willing to listen and let it come through. Then now you can ascertain what it's saying and make the right choice and the right decision. There you go. I love it. I love it. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next part of this. And like I said, if we don't get through all of this, I'll just do another training session on this particular topic. All right, so you both hit the nail on the head. It's like, it's a compelling invitation. Stop selling, 
start caring about people, be bold, be different. Um, and then, you know, I talk about how to craft a compelling invitation, know the person, don't sell, invite, infuse huge value into the invitation, not selling. Ask if the person is willing to invest 30 minutes in a conversation, not a presentation. And you'll see when I go through what my one-on-one -on -one conversations look like, you'll see it's quite different than a typical presentation. Now, I will say this, the large group presentations are a huge value um, for a number of reasons. Personally, I take people to the huge presentations like Tim does or Alex does after I've had this conversation with them. And I do that because number one, they're very good presentations. Number two, it's good validation, much like a three-way phone call. So I don't want to at all discount the large presentations that we're doing because they work. But what I do want to do is get the team, if you really want to have 100 new people on your team in the next 90 days, you have to get away from waiting for a company meeting and trying to get people to company meetings or group presentations that someone is doing. You've got to get to the point where as a leader, you're able to have a conversation with people and um, you know answer some questions and get them interested and ex excited. Okay, so uh, basically this slide is just talking about what we've just covered. We're going to go ahead and move to the next uh, part of the the, the uh, presentation, which is the conversation or formalizing the relationship. Okay. Um, the conversation, you know, when you get them on the call, let's say you've set an appointment and you get them on a call. Um, and I've got this broken down in a word, spread, a word sheet so you can actually use it um, step by step. But the way I like to open the call is I like to say, hey, you know, Bob, I absolutely love your blind spot coaching. I, you know, I love the way that you're helping people stop being hit by the proverbial truck. And I've been out on your website looking at it, but I'd really like to hear from you and your words, your voice, what it is that led you to this type of coaching and what makes you passionate about it. And then I shut up right then and there and I don't say another word unless they're, you know, they make a comment that, that warrants a response and I let them tell their story. You will not believe the amazing stories that I have heard over the process of, of building our team. Uh, you know, people have gone through crazy things in their life and instead of letting it beat them down, they've turned it into uh, an opportunity to serve other people and help other people. I literally get goosebumps when I talk to these people and I hear their stories. It, it is, it's like so energizing and amazing. And, uh, you know, I think I'm giving something to them, but they're giving something to me. And so once they're done telling their story, then I'll just say something like, wow, thanks for sharing. You know, you're, you're absolutely the kind of person we would love to collaborate with. And I, I, I just love your story and, and how you turn, you know, a lemon into lemonade, right? Um, and I don't necessarily use those words, but I, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, I really love how you've taken adversity and, and turned it into opportunity to help and serve other people. And then I ask him a question. I say, hey, Bob, would it be OK with you if I share a short seven minute video? You know, it'll kind of give you an overview of where we came from, where we are, where we are, where we're heading and how we might work together. Would that be OK? I ask their permission. And they always say, yes, go ahead and play the video. And I've got the seven minute video that I share with them. And I'll, I'll share it with you, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're feel, feel free to use it or copy it and, and, you know, modify it however you want to. Um, it's a tool for us to share and use. And then at the end of the video, I basically ask them, okay, Bob, um, you know, what did you like uh, the most about the video? They want to get them to respond and tell me what they seen or what they liked. And typically they'll tell me two or three things they liked about the video that interests them. 
And then I'll ask them, what kind of questions do you have? And I'll go back and forth with them on their questions. And at the end of the questions, you know, I basically um, ask them a, a closing statement, which is really formalizing the relationship. Uh, and here's the question that I'll ask them. And I'll give this to you in writing. So, Bob, you know, based on everything we've talked about, your goals and how we complement each other, it just makes a lot of sense to me that we get you started with our organization. Does that make sense to you? Now, any of you on the call who I may have personally enrolled have heard this question because it's the question I ask every time. It makes a lot of sense to me that we get you started with the great discovery. Does that make sense to you? See, this is a very low-key, soft closing question because what we're doing here, we're not asking them to pull out their credit card. We're not asking them to buy anything. All we're doing is we're asking them if it makes sense to them. And, and about 30% of the time on that first call, they'll say, yes, it makes sense to me. You know, uh, And you just set up the relationship. Now I'm thinking that, let me close the screen here so I can uh, see everybody. I'm thinking that um, at least one or two people, I think Dell Young may have been one of the people that said yes on the very first call. Is that right, Dell? Yes, it was. Yeah, so, so we set him up on that very first call, just using that same strategy. Hello, Christine. Welcome to the call. And uh, we're covering on how to add 100 new members to your team in the next 90 days. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Jeff was another, uh, Jeff Payne, who's on the call. Um, and I know his camera's not working right now. He can't actually uh, come on camera. But uh, Jeff Payne was another one of those people who actually in that first call join the system. Now, here's a, a difference. Jeff is somebody I've known for years. Del Young, you know how I got in contact with Del Young? How many people have heard or watched part of my videos on how to cold call people, coaches? Raise your hand. Okay. Those of you who haven't watched it yet, watch it. Um, because that's how I got introduced to Del Young. I was going through on Google and searching for coaches, content creators, and that kind of thing. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of neat ways that you can do that same thing. And if you're not comfortable with the phone, I'm going to teach you how to do it on LinkedIn as well. All right, let me go back to the screen share here. We got just a little bit more on this. Then we'll move on to the next piece. Got to get rid of these controls. They're always... Um, in the way, no matter where you put them. All right, James, so. James, where is your video that you just talked about on how to cold call? Is it on YouTube? Uh, yeah, it's on YouTube, but I have it in a document. I'm going to share with you a link to it. Okay. So once we get through this series, and I kind of think um, out of respect for everybody's time, we're going to have to do part of this series on another call. Um, but I'll, I'll send you all these tools that I'm sharing with you. Now, here's the thing. If some somebody's either going to say yes or no. So if they say yes, then you enroll them, just like I, I did with uh, Dale and, and Jeff. If they say no, then what I'd like to try to do is I like to take responsibility for their no. It's my fault they're saying no. And so I'll say, hey, I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood something along the way, or you know, maybe I didn't explain something properly. What about it doesn't make sense to you? See, now, again, this is no pressure. This is no pressure at all. I'm just asking them, hey, what about it doesn't make sense to you? And the most common things that I'll hear is I don't have a course that I could put on the platform. Um, the other one is, you know, typically a money type scenario. And so if they say I don't have a course, well, who wants to volunteer to answer that objection? You can un unmute yourself and, and uh, answer that question for me. We have a course that teaches you how to create courses. Bingo. Who was that? It's Jamee. Awesome. Thank you for that answer. 
I tell them that that's great. That's fine because you know what? Our system, we have a step-by-step -step course, a recorded course, but not just a recorded course. We also have live certified Six Sigma trainers that are thrilled to help you create your course. So this would be perfect for you. And you can overcome that objection pretty easy. If it's a money thing, then we, you know, we have to talk about it. Okay, what does that look like? Um, you know, what's the differential? Is you know, maybe a different time. Uh, you know, some people tell me, well, they're getting their check on the 15th or what have you. And so we just have a, a normal conversation with them, no pressure, and figure out how we can answer the things that do not make sense to them. And that's something that we can uh, help you with. Okay, so on the free gift announcement, I'm going to go through a few of these things. Um, one is the memory jogger and one is a customized uh, lead tracking sheet that you're going to be able to actually track your progress as you're going through this program. Let me pull those up here. All right, now this beautiful sheet that I have here to share, um, one of our amazing team members actually reformatted this for me. It's one I've used for years, but um, she reformatted this for me for The Great Discovery, so it looks like The Great Discovery. And um, everybody give Christine Dean a hand. She happens to be on the call. She's the one that did all this work for me. And it was a lot more work than I thought it was. But this is a memory jogger. So this is the first step that I want you to go through in preparing to take action and really utilize um, some of the other tools that I have here for you. And the way you use this is you'll go through here and you're going to read all these questions. And uh, what I want you to do is when you first start is just write down the person's name. Don't go look up their phone number. Don't go look up their email because that's going to distract you. It's going to be very time consuming. And that's not the goal here. I want you to write down their name. Now, when I say write down their name, I have created a, a, a tool that I can share with you so that if I'm helping you prospect these people, we have all the data in, in the same spot. You guys see this here on screen? Yeah. You got it? Okay. So this is a tool. Um, I'll create one with your name on it, send it to you. And what you do is you put in their, their first and last name. If you don't remember their last name, put in something that reminds you of who they are. So for example, on the memory jogger, you know, I have, um, let me pull it back up here. On the on the memory jogger, like here where it says, who's your neighbor? Well, the neighboring farm over here is owned by Joe. So I would put down Joe neighbor. And while I'm there on Joe neighbor, I would think to myself, okay, who do I know related to Joe or affiliated with Joe? Well, I happen to know a lady by the name of Susan Vitti that, that Joe introduced me to, um, who actually was a volunteer on 9-11 at Ground Zero. And so I would put Susan Vitti down. And then I'd with Susan Vitti's name, I'd say, okay, um, who do I know affiliated with Susie? You know, or who other people I know affiliated with Joe? And by using that technique, that strategy, you're going to get a whole lot more names than if you just write down, you know, who's your neighbor. On top of who's your neighbor, who else could be affiliated with your neighbor? Then I want you to put the names in here. Um, and once you get as many names as you can think of, you want to go all the way through this whole document. And it has all these different types of businesses to help you think of people. 
I want you to go through here and think about how can you serve, you know, how can you serve these people and who can you serve the most? I want you to pick the top 10 people that you believe we could serve the most with the great discovery. And next to their names over here in top 10, I want you to put a number 10. Okay, once you get your number 10, stop right there and then go look up the phone numbers and email. You don't have to find all this information, but whatever you can find, put it in here because now it's going to help me research them, you know, and find more information, uh, you know, about them. And I'm going to do this with you. We're going to research them together because my goal is not to give you a fish. My goal is to teach you how to fish. Because if I can help you do this and get to the point to where you really, you're better at it than me, because most of you, you know, are, are very successful people in life. And after I walk through this with you a few times, you'll be better at it than me. And get you to the point to where you can now share with your team how to do this. This is really where your business starts self-replicating. And you wouldn't even be able to stop your business if you tried. <laughs> um, and I can attest to that because I've already done this with a number of different companies. Okay, so that's the memory jogger piece. Once you get your names down, we're going to start inviting those uh, people. Um, and then we're going to start tracking your progress on this particular tool. Now, it looks a little bit confusing, but this is a, a very easy to use tool. I'd like for you to leave it just like it is, um, with the exception of members added over here. This would be actual members added. Um, anything that's in green, you're not going to break anything if you change it. Anything that's in this light blue has formulas in it. So you don't want to, you know, blue is not for you. Um, green is your thing. Blue is not for you. And I've got the next three months in this file. And I've just put some sample data in here, but when you get yours, these will, this column right here is going to be all zeroed out. Um, and um, matter of fact, I'm going to make, I'll make this one a, uh, a different color. So, you know, this is primarily the one that you want to change. So I'll set, set this one to like a, a yellow. Um, so each time you add a member, you're going to update this field. Now, this would be you, so you want to put your name right here in the top. And then as you add team members, or if you have some other team members that want to participate with you on this program, you can plug them in here, but put their name in here. Because as we go forward, we'll see if it's Susie Brown, where Susie Brown is with her goal. And all we're looking for is over the next 90 days for each person to add 10 people into the system. This will get actually 110 people into your organization. If just these 10 people and you get 10 people. If you look at this, your weekly requirement to get there is 0.833333 people. So um, I, I guess we have to recruit short people so we can reach that goal. I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a very, very simple goal. And some of you say, well, I, you know, I've been in here 90 days and I don't have 100 people now. Yes, but we weren't, we, we hadn't created a target for you to hit. You know, we haven't been aiming for it. And as Zig Ziglar says, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Um, and uh, so we're going to go, go through this. Now, I'm going to stop for a minute and just see what kind of questions that we have, because I know I've covered a lot of information in the last 40 minutes. Um, and then we'll go into maybe the next phase if we still have time for that. So who has questions? Any questions on how to use the memory jogger piece? Any questions on how to use the tracking tool? Okay, Jemaine. Yes. Um, how, okay, let's say you're, you bring in your new person and you're starting this. Is this the very first activity that you do or what, what would be the steps? They have now enrolled, mm -hmm. they receive their welcome to the team email and then. And then 
you're going to have them watch this video on how to use the memory jogger to create their list. Okay. That's the very first thing that you want to get them to do is start building that list. And um, you can share the Google Sheets, you know, create them a copy if you know how to do that with Google Sheets. If not, you can ask me offline. I can I can show you how you can create a copy of the Google Sheets so they can see it and you can see it. And that way you can go look every day and see if they're actually adding to their list. Now, I showed uh, someone just a few days ago how to create a list. And I have to say he's been doing a great, great job. And so everybody give Akia Heem a hand. I'm going to show you his list he's been working on. He's on the call. Pull that up here. You got a lot of hands out there, Aki. So let me pull this up here. And I'll go to file, open. I told Christine I've seen hers too. Yeah. Cool. Christine Quinn, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you've seen the video on hers. So right. look here, he's, he already has almost 40 people in here. And he's only been working on this for a day or so. The memory jogger really works. As I, I take people tell me all the time, James, I don't know 100 people. I just there, I just don't know that many people. But once they work on that, um, you know, that memory jogger. Oh, I didn't I didn't share the screen here. Let's try that again. So here here is uh, Akia Heems. Um, you know, he's got like 40 people in here and he's already got some marked as a 10 and a nine. And what I tell you is do the first, the top 10 is 10. And then ones that you think would be like the second phase, mark them as a nine. We go after the tens first, and then we'll go after the nines after this. And you don't have to do this by yourself. I'm going to go through this with example. And we never moved them. James? I'm, I'm back now. I don't know what happened. Oh. My, uh, my, uh, Think disconnected. All right, let me reshare this. I don't know if you guys seen what I was saying. Yeah, what I was saying, James, was the nines and tens there. I'm gonna have to delete those because you put those there for an example. I didn't oh, put okay. Those. Well, I'll go ahead and delete those, and then you can pick out your nines and tens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's that's that tool. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna show you on this spreadsheet is some activity that will get you to where you need to go. So you see here where it says daily contacts, 20, daily invitations, five, okay? What's a daily contact? Daily contact is when you reach out to someone, either via e email, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, it doesn't really matter how you reach out to them, just that you reach out to them. That's a daily contact. Um, an invitation is when you actually introduce somebody to me and we're inviting them to a meeting. And I'm going to do some of them for you so that you, you get comfortable where you can do them yourself. So I'm going to cover a couple of ways that you can do some daily contacts. I'm going to go out to my Instagram here. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go out to my LinkedIn. So many social media accounts, so little time. <clears throat> In LinkedIn, you can actually search for content creators, right? If I can ever type here. All right, now I wanna show you something here. See all people results. And there are literally tons. Look, here it says there's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, I guess 10 people per page because this one I'm already connected with. And there's at least 100 pages there. So there's tons and tons of content creators. Now, there's different ways to reach out to them. Let's see, this one is Bridget Flange or Flange. Uh, looks like I'm already con connected because I can message her, um, but let's go look at her. 
uh, well, actually, I guess I'm not connected to her. Um, but anyway, so you, so you can connect to them. And then once they're connected, if you have a premium account, you can actually message them before you're connected. But once you're connected with them, you want to send them a message. And I'm going to give you a script on what to send to them. But what I like to do is come out here and look at their contact information. A lot of times you'll find a website in here. She doesn't have a website. But I'll look for something on here that I can compliment her on. Um, and so e-commerce marketing associate, content creator. This is December 2019. This is December 21, 21, 2022. Um, you know, I'll look for some of her posts or, you know, something like that. Uh, honors awards, dean's list. <laughs> I probably won't bring that up because uh, that's probably been a while. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back and look for one that has a little bit more information, maybe. All right. So let's just look at this one here. All right, this one has actually a a website, Instagram, that kind of thing. So you can go out here and actually look at the website. And you find something on here that you like. Look at the portfolio. Um, you ladies might think of something to compliment on here before me. Um, these are looks like styles, those kind of things. And then you just send a, a message to her that says, Hey, I really, I was looking at your website and I really like, you know, the uh, images on this page or, you know, something about the about me. I really like, um, you know, it's my job to make your job easier. I really like your page on it's my job to make your job easier. So, you know, something like that. And so we actually have some scripts for you where you say, here's, this is an example of a script, you know. Um, and this is talking about if somebody likes your post, this is, but you can use this either way. You just say, you know, hey, Mary, I love X, Y, Z about your uh, LinkedIn page or your website. It's amazing. And that's it. So you're not selling. You're not getting on there and giving your resume. You're not trying to tell them, oh, guess what? We sell courses for, you know, uh, people all over the globe or anything like that. See, that goes back to selling. You want to engage the person and get them to communicate with you. So if you come up with just a small compliment for them, then they will respond back to you. You know, if somebody says, hey, I, I love the post that you made. It's really amazing. You know, I, I love the uh, video you created that I've seen on LinkedIn or your Facebook. It's really amazing. They're going to respond back and say, oh, thank you so much, right? So the next thing that you're going to do, still not selling, you're just going to say, um, uh, is creating workshops or courses a thing for you? See, this is a strategy that Root teaches right here. Is creating workshops or courses a thing for you? See, we're still not selling. Um, yes, Gotham, you can feel free to ask a question. Um, sorry, I forgot to change my name. It's Steve. Um, uh, is this the message that you're sending? Is it, is it in response to a post? Is a pro this is a private message. Yeah, it's, it could be either or. So what you can do is if they have a post, then you can go to the post and respond to that post. So for example, if you found a post that, you know, this person did right here, you go right to one of her posts. I, I think this is one of her posts right here. Yeah, I didn't want to be on camera. But there were many women saying they didn't feel beautiful and they wish they knew how, you know, to do makeup. And so you could go on there and respond to that post and, and you know, and say something like, hey, I liked your message. You know, I've had days where I didn't, you know, think that I'm I beautiful without makeup. Right. Um, or if you're already connected to them, then you could go ahead and send them a private message and compliment one of their posts. But that's the idea. Does it make sense? Sorry, Does it make sense to do both? Like to keep one, like do you do the comment and then uh, send the personal message? 
as a I, side I would, note? I wouldn't do both at the same time because you don't you don't want to seem over aggressive to get them to respond. I would just do one. And if you don't get a response back, maybe a day or two later, you could do another one, right? So uh, the thing that we're trying to avoid here is actually appearing to be selling or appearing to be pushy. Most right. of the time, I would say over 80% of the time, when I compliment someone on their post, they'll reply back and say, you know, hey, thanks, you know, something like that. And then now that's your that's your prompt to then respond back to them. And then you say, hey, a uh, question is, you know, creating workshops or courses a thing for you? Well, they already said they're a content creator, um, which means they could possibly be into workshops or they could possibly be into courses, right? And you're just trying to figure out, are they a good potential prospect for you? Are they a good potential prospect for you? And if they come back and they say, no, they're not, you say, oh, okay, well, thanks. And you just move on to the next one, right? But if they say yes, um, then you can, you know, talk about this right here. You know, a group of us are working together and promoting, and I, I use a different script here. I would say, you know, we have a, a global uh, sales team and, you know, we promote people's courses and we pay them royalties on that. Is that something you'd be interested in discussing? See? We're still not selling. We're just we're just communicating with them. They're either going to be interested in discussing it or, or they're not. Um, and if they say yes and say, great, um, you're going to love it. And you're going to give them a couple optional times. Now, we teach in our group not to post your calendar or your calendar out there, right? Because now we're asking them to work instead of you know, us serving. We're in the service business. We want to serve them. So I typically would give them a couple of times if they say, no, I'm busy at those times, then I would ask them, could you please send me your calendar link and I'll pick something that'll work for both of us, right? So we wanted to avoid, um, you know, making them, making them work for it. And so you guys will have access to the script. You can feel free to modify it however you want to. This is just kind of giving you a trail. It's like breadcrumbs, right? Um, lead, leading the, the bird um, you know, uh, forward. <laughs> That's all you really want to do. Is The first time you really hit them up with your resume, and I see this on LinkedIn all the time where people post uh, two or three paragraphs on, hey, we, you know, we sell courses for people globally and um, you know we've got this translation stuff and we do all this stuff they're going to learn that when they have a conversation with you but you don't want to throw it out there because now you're selling on features and benefits instead of really offering to serve those people yes christine lower hand find the unmute button <laughs> you know tricky, i love tricky. it <laughs> anyway, um, when you're doing that from a post, mm -hmm. is it some point where you want to move them to a private message? Because it seems like that's an awful lot of stuff to be putting public. Sure. Yeah, no, sure. If you're connected with them where you can send them a private message, then absolutely. You, you want to get them on a private message because you're wanting to engage them as a human being and, and communicate with them. So it's a very good point. You want to get them into a private message as soon as you as you can. So um, that's that's what I would encourage you to do if, if, as soon as you can. Very good point. Any other questions? I have one. Okay. I, and maybe this is going to be covered or mm -hmm. and maybe this might even not even be a concern. But I'm looking at these sites that we're going to, these LinkedIn people or whoever they are, mm -hmm. they are selling something. Yes. And I'm thinking it might be worth mentioning that we don't want to give them false buying signals. Mm -hmm. While we are giving them compliments, mm -hmm. uh, they might, some of them, and, and again, this might not even be a concern, mm -hmm. but I, m my experience has been, you know, after I finish asking questions, then they are going to turn around and sell. Right. Whatever they sell. Mm -hmm. Is that a concern? Uh, well, um, you know, you always want to be mindful of the communication that you're having with people. 
But here's the reality is we are giving buying signals intentionally because we have the ability to create some phenomenal sales for them. And uh, many of these coaches, teachers, and trainers, our customers are not their only prospect. Our Their prospects are all of our salespeople, all of our other coaches, and even potentially you yourself might want to take one of their courses. So by engaging with them and, and giving them the impression that you know, we're interested in their products and services, we're absolutely inter interested in them. And given the idea that maybe we're in the process of, of potentially buying, you know, we as a global organization are interested in buying and not just buying, but promoting their self globally. So I don't know if that totally answers your concern, but that's kind of the mindset I approach it in is, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to help them make some sales. So good question though. Very good question. I think it's important to always keep in mind, you know, how we're communicating with people. Anyone else have any questions on this part of the training? Okay, so I think we're probably about halfway through all the information that I have for you on this, at least for phase one. Um, we still need to cover really the introductions and the invitations. I have scripts for you both for email and you know verbal uh, invitations. And we'll, we'll do that on the next training session because I think it's probably another uh, hour just by itself and we, and we have about three minutes left. Anybody like to make any final comments or any final questions before we close out for the day? I have a question, uh, James. Uh, Lucky, yes. when will we get the, um, the PDFs or whatever it is you're sending us? I didn't yes. see the chat. Did I overlook it? No, I'm going to actually email them to you. In fact, okay. I'll take a screen print here um, to put into my document. Okay. And I will email them to you. I, I believe I've got everybody's email addresses. If not, um, I might have to pick up some from Root, but we'll get those. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And there's I a, start working on my list tomorrow. So. <laughs> okay. There's a whole host of other documents um, that you're going to get as well, but it won't make sense for me to send them to you now because we haven't covered it. Um, but uh, we'll just turn around next week and we'll go ahead and and uh, cover the rest of the the training and I'll get you those documents as well. And then we we really want to you know get this thing rolling for you because I sincerely want to help you get a hundred new affiliates in the next 90 days. First step, your homework right now is to start creating your list. Uh, get the memory jogger, which I'll get out to you. Well, here, I think I can actually, let me go ahead and put them in the chat if that'll work for you guys. Um, that's something that uh, Rook has been doing that I haven't done before, but hey, I'm always looking to grow and um, do more. Let's see here. Wow. Here comes the memory jogger. Oops, I just sent that to one person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Laura. I didn't realize I was on that. Well, at least you got one done. That's right. Now I'm going to have to do it 42 more times. <laughs> okay. Now I think all of y'all have that one. Let's see. The other thing that I can share with you right now is... Um, oh, the invitation. That would work. Get that one for you.
There's the invitation. I'm going to go ahead and give you the introduction one here. And these will also be in the email, correct? Yeah, I'll email them too. Okay. And I've got a couple more for you, but I'm going to send those after we cover those particular <laughs> topics. But uh, got me curious about that video. That'll be in the email too. Yeah, the the, the, the video minutes. is is in the in, in the email. In fact, the video is in that one document that's called Introductions. It's in there. There's two of them. I have one five minute video that's that's good for recruiting affiliates and one seven minute video that's good for recruiting course creators. And that's what I'm, I've started playing. I've stopped doing presentations. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanted to see how it works because, you know, a lot of people can have a conversation with someone, uh, but some people, they just get nervous when they think about the idea of a presentation. So it's easier if you just click a seven minute video. How many of you have uh, uh Zoom. How many do you have Zoom? The thing we're on today. Okay. How many do not have Zoom? I didn't catch all of those. I think you all have Zoom. All right. And it's free. Um, how many know how to share your screen and volume on Zoom? Anybody not know how to share your screen and, and volume on Zoom? Do you screen. have to be able to share your... I know how to share a screen. How do you share the volume? Okay, so down here where there's a green button that says share screen, when you click it, there are two little square boxes in the bottom left-hand corner. One of them says share sound. One of them says optimize for video clip. Okay, do you see it? No, did you click the share button? Yeah, I got just copy of my desktop. Oh, you already shared it? Or no? Yeah, I see it. It's in, it's in the middle of mine. Share yeah. sound and optimize. Oh, 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 it. Now it's on the right. Optimize video clip. Okay. Right. You must have a different uh, operating system or something. Are you on a Mac? I am. Okay, no. that's fine. No, James, you have an old version of Zoom. You need to update your Zoom. I do? Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. I'll update my Zoom. Um, so that's what you do. You have to be sure to share your sound or you're going to play the video and they might barely hear it coming through your speakers or they might not hear it at all. Um, so that I'd like for you to practice that, maybe team up and you guys practice together on using Zoom. Make sure that when you play the video that the other person is hearing it. And let's make this a real team effort. Let's work on this together. You guys uh, exchange information in the chat box if you want to. You guys want to do that and, and try to team up on this? Sure, why not? Okay. Pop in your, your uh, phone number and email address in the chat box. I'm going to leave this line open for you know a few minutes and let you guys introduce yourself. Because the more we can do together as a team, the more successful we're going to be. You guys hear me say all the time, rising water lifts all boats. And so let's all uh, put a little water in the in the ocean. This is gonna be fun. You guys are so much fun. James, too. Can you share that spreadsheet you were showing us? Oh yeah, that spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me download that off of. Uh, I've got that on Google. Let me uh, download that and I'll I'll share it with you. Thanks for reminding me. Download. 
Microsoft Excel. All right, it's downloading Microsoft Excel. While it's downloading, I'm gonna share the screen one more time and just show you what really you're gonna fill in on this. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna make all of these columns right here yellow on all three tabs. But basically that's what you're gonna fill in is whenever you add a new member into your team. And this is actually, this, this tab is through July 15th. After July 15th, you'll switch to this tab. Okay, and it's the same thing. It's just, uh, you know, basically you've got uh, one month at a time. So right here, you've got 12 weeks to do this. So in 12 weeks, you need 0.833 people per week. That's all you have to get is per week. When you add, say you've added a person, you put a one in there. Um, when, let's say this team member number one is Mary Brown, put her name in there so you know it's her stats. And then um, let's say she signs up two people. You know, she would put a two in there. And then the next day, maybe the next week you sign up two more, so you change this to three, okay? And then that's going to uh, continue to, you know, change. It'll actually change this number right here. But as you go on, you know, this'll, if you haven't done them, you'll see this number growing um, because you mm -hmm. haven't done them, right? So um, that's basically what all you have to do is in the yellow part is, is put how many people during that time frame that you signed up and it'll track it for you all the way through the very end. And it's gonna tell you the total members that you have, you know, members this month. And you'll see some of these, I have numbers in here. I'll clear them all out for you. Any questions on how to use that? Okay, let me pull this Excel spreadsheet up here and I'll send that to you guys. I'm changing the format a little bit. Whenever I downloaded it, it changed, messed up the format a little bit. Just take me a second here. So I'm on my iPad. Can somebody send me a copy of the chat? Because <laughs> I can't figure out how to do it from my iPad. I've got I got all the downloads. I just want to get everybody's email addresses. So. Okay. Can someone do that for her? Hello, hello. Can somebody do that for her? I know can how do that for you. Awesome. Uh, you. Have you got your email? Yeah your e email in there I'll, I'll email it to you thank you so much Patrice. I, I appreciate it. it I just everything is truncated in an iPad or a phone so it doesn't have as many features <laughs> appreciate it well you've done a lot of work James thank you so much oh my pleasure my pleasure I'm just fixing the format on this because when I downloaded it, it changed a couple things and it's just almost done here. I had someone share with me. Um, she was so organized and this reminded me when you were showing the spreadsheet, but she's got like a, a spreadsheet with all the different tabs for all her different links and like I'm finding like there's so many links now with the great discovery and I'm involved in other things. So like I would have mm -hmm. a, a tab for um, links on, I don't know, contacts or something or, and I haven't done it yet. I just seen hers and it was like, oh yes, I need this. It would save so much time because I'm always trying to look for the link and the you know, things like that. So that's but I'm cool. not that savvy with uh, spreadsheets and stuff. So and so she does that with the great discovery kind of stuff, or is it something else she does? Yeah, she's she is an affiliate. It was Christine uh, um, uh, Bernal, who she was here la on Tuesday. OK, you offered to have her do up a, a consultation with her. Okay. I seen in the chat. So yeah, 
She's the one who had that. Ask her to show her your, her organized. Uh, yeah, I have uh, to spread. take a look at that. I might have to I might have to borrow that from her. It's one of the things I love yeah. about this business is we get to learn from each other every time I yeah. work with a yeah. group. I, I learn something new as well. So it's exactly. It ways. So yeah, thank you all for joining. I know we ran o a little over. Um, we'll finish this up next week. But in the meantime, let's uh, please, please, please work on your list. Um, I will email you out a copy of what I did for a key and, and a few other people on Sheets. So the nice thing about doing it on Google Sheets live on, on the internet is I'll be able to see your database too. So when we're working on it together, um, if I if I need to follow up with someone, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to pull it up and get their phone number, that kind of thing. All right, guys and gals, thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Take thank care. You, thank you. Thank you. Patrice, um, if you have a moment, uh, excuse me, but I would like what you're going to send Laura because I don't know, my computer is very weird and I'm not able to save the chat either. Sure. So what's hers in there? Have you got your email in there, it's, George? It's in there. I put everything in there, yeah. Yeah, I'll email so, it. Terrific. Y'all are awesome. Teaming up already. Great. Love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night, thank all. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.